Today we're talking about fracking or shale development. It's fast become one of the most important issues our state is facing. With all the stories out there, some people were surprised that we allowed fracking on our land. I never thought that fracking would be cool. I still don't think fracking is cool. Fracking is forecast to create nearly 300,000 jobs in the next four years. Lots of noise, lots of lights, odors, dust. It's harmful to people's daily lives. Let's find a way to use fracking and embrace the technology. In our quest to understand hydraulic fracturing, we first look at a map of the United States. Here we can see there are deposits of natural gas bearing shale all over the United States, with the largest on this map being the Marcellus Shale region. Let's take a dive into the Marcellus region to get a closer look at the fracking process in action. Here we can see a rough diagram that breaks down the general processes involved with hydraulic fracturing. First, trucks bring equipment to drill the borehole down into the ground. This borehole goes down and through the water table. Now fracking puts in special safeguards such as concrete and steel casing so as to prevent any leaching of hydrocarbons and fracking water from leaking into the water table. The vertical shaft after reaching almost two miles below the water table turns into a horizontal shaft where small openings in the casing provide water, sand, and chemicals at high pressure to fracture the shale, creating fissures. Here we can see that natural gas will flow from the fissures and go up through the well. So at this point you're probably wondering a very important question. What are we arguing about? And that's a great question, folks. But unfortunately, the arguments don't boil down to just big oil and its money and the crazy environmentalists. One does not simply frack. So come along with us on an adventure as we explore fracking. Well, it is no secret that fracking is a hot-button topic because of its controversial effects on the environment. The truth is that it is a growing staple of the economy and contains its own benefits as well. Now, being from Pennsylvania and a Penn State student, when I hear fracking, I think of Marcellus Shell which has a prominent building in most of the Appalachian Mountains as well as Pennsylvania. According to the Marcellus Shell quarterly earnings report in June 2012, fracking has allowed Marcellus Shell to create over 6,500 jobs annually. That's a 20% increase from the job rates of mining and logging professions in 2011 for Pennsylvania. Furthermore, these jobs average an annual salary of roughly $64,000, well above the national average. This accounts for roughly one quarter of the jobs created in Pennsylvania overall in 2012. As shown in the diagram here, Marcellus Shale has had a noticeable effect in Pennsylvania. Wherever fracking opportunities occur, the unemployment rate is lessened. This evidence suggests that fracking creates many sustainable job opportunities at a time where our nation is trying to lessen the unemployment rate. Furthermore, although fracking has been under fire for its effects on the environment, Many of these cases, such as the one study by, done by the Colorado Department of Natural Resources, prove that many of the environmental backlashes caused by fracking are due to human error and not the science itself. Now, like the BP oil spill of 2010, no one will argue that these are affronts to the environment and should have been avoided. But the blame cannot rest on the science itself and should instead victimize the ones who fail to prevent them. While many in support of fracking agree that fracking can be hazardous to the environment, we believe that refining the methods in which we gather natural gas from the ground can lead to a solution that helps everyone and has minimal side effects. It is absolutely true that fracking in its current form is imperfect, as many of our energy gathering methods are. However, rather than abolishing it like the petition to ban fracking in California, we should be allowed to study and improve it so it can become a viable method for providing energy. Although it is hard to dispute that hydraulic fracturing has important economic benefits, many will argue that the financial gains caused by fracking far from outweigh the potential harm to the environment that could arise. As a relatively new process, the dangers of fracking haven't completely been determined, 
and its ecological impacts haven't been properly analyzed. The amount of water, up to 140 billion gallons in 2010, used in fracking is definitely not good for the environment. The chemicals used in fracking fluid are dangerous and volatile. Although less than 2% of the fluid is composed of chemicals, many of these are known to be toxic to humans and wildlife. The chemicals used in fracking vary from the hazardous to the extremely toxic and carcinogenic, such as benzol or formic acid. The companies using fracking say nothing about the precise composition of the chemical mixture. But it is known that there are about 700 different chemical agents which can be used in the process. The most controversial aspect of fracking is the effect it could have on the water supply of homeowners near fracturing wells. Although fracking companies insist that their drilling is more than far enough below groundwater wells, it has been reported that methane concentrations are up to 17 times higher in drinking well water wells near fracturing sites. The 2010 documentary Gasland by Josh Fox cites dozens of cases of people experiencing severe water contamination immediately after fracking was implemented in a nearby area. Horror stories of lighting people sink water on fire and homeowners being in constant fear of an underground gas explosion are not uncommon throughout these regions. Their post-fracking test, their own, the methane tested 0.01 milligrams per liter and since July of um, 2010 it has tested as high as 64 milligrams. So obviously something has changed. The difficulty of environmentalists in attaining undisputable proof that fracking directly causes water contamination has allowed fracking companies to continue their extraction of natural gas with little political opposition. Many question if this innocent until proven guilty philosophy is worth the risk of disease and even human life. With more than a thousand documented cases of water contamination next to areas of gas drilling and incidents of sensory, respiratory, and neurological damage, would you want to take that risk for a slightly cheaper energy bill every month? After examining both sides of fracking, we can see why this controversy is incredibly volatile. Weighing the potential benefits as well as the ecological concerns of fracking yields an unclear result. Although it does not look like fracking will be abolished anytime soon, environmentalists and demonstrators alike are pushing for new legislation regarding its regulation, and it seems to be effective. It is evident from our research that pro and anti-fracking arguments don't always match up. This is because there is a lot of confusion regarding fracking techniques. Current legislation allows for loopholes for fracking companies. For example, the Safe Drinking Water Act, which regulates the injection of chemicals into the ground, specifically excludes fracking from government supervision as long as diesel fuel is not used in the process. Also, the government does not currently require fracking companies to disclose the chemicals used in their fracking fluid. These political outs are only preventing citizens from making educated decisions about the possible dangers of fracking. The Fracturing Responsibility and Awareness of Chemicals Act, or FRAC Act, would require fracking companies to list the chemicals used in their fracking fluid. Also, the act would put fracking under the regulation of the Safe Water Drinking Act. Overall, the FRAC Act would make fracking safer and more environmentally friendly while providing peace of mind to landowners near fracking sites. Fracking can be the answer to many of our energy problems. As a developing technology, it is expected there will be problems and glitches along the way. Serious changes will need to be made in fracking safety and government regulation in order to satisfy concerned landowners and environmentalists. It is evident that compromises on both sides will be necessary if fracking is to become a viable, enduring energy source in the future.